All right, hi everybody. My name is Alondra Caldera, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about obesity within Mar County, Oregon. And so, a presentation overview. All right. So, throughout this presentation, information will be given on how obesity is growing and how this affects the people living in Mar County, Oregon. We will also be discussing some methods to handle this problem and what types of things should be implemented. Topics will include data throughout the years and influences, the effects of obesity and encouraging and addressing the problem. So first of all, what is obesity? For adults, a body mass index, BMI, of 30 kilograms per squared meter or higher is what is used to identify obese individuals. When considered overweight, there is a BMI of 25 to 29.9 kilograms per squared meter. And this is what defines an overweight individual. Although BMI is not used for children of ages 2 to 18, instead it is recommended to use a percentile scale that uses the children's sex and age. And so the energy imbalance of the calories consumed and expended is the main cause of obesity, but it is linked to the lifestyle the individual has. So here we see some statistics in Morrow County, Oregon. And so this graph shows adult obesity, and you can see that the red one stands for Morrow County, and it is an increasing line over the years. And so in Morrow County, at 2016, the percentage is 35% compared to the United States being at 29% and as well as Oregon. So here we can see that it is at a greater percentage than Oregon and the United States. Okay, so some more statistics. Physical inactivity. So in Morrow County, we see that there is a 19% in 2016, but in Oregon, it is lower, although in the United States, it is higher. But you can also see that it fluctuates a lot. It seems to be rising and then going back down. And here you can see that it might start to rise again, according to this trend we have going on. And so some more statistics that I think is really important is children in poverty. So you can see that it's different throughout all of the years. In 2018, it is actually starting to grow with in Moore County being at 21% compared to the United States being at 18% and Oregon being at 16%. All right, and so some genetic influences. The first being monogenic causes, which can be due to a single gene mutation that disrupts the regulatory system by appetite and weight. This generally requires there to be two dysfunctional copies of the same gene in a compound heterozygous form or in a homozygous form in order to express this phenotype. And the next category would be syndrome obesity, which can cause severe ob obesity because of a change in the single gene or even chromosomal region of several genes. The severity is due to the result in expression of phenotypes, which usually include intellectual disability, dysmorphic facies, or organ system specific abnormalities. And so the last one is polygenic obesity that can be caused by a big number of genes and the effect can be amplified when put into an environment that promotes weight gain. And so mainly this is one of the bigger causes for obesity, but there's also a correlation of social influences that we are talking about next. So there are many challenges that come with trying to adapt to different healthy behaviors in the current social environment. It has been reported that an individual will be more physically active when there is also friends or family that are also engaging in high levels of physical activity. So here we see that social influences are mostly influenced by social norms and social support. And so it is important to surround yourself with people that will support you and that will help you engage in a healthier lifestyle. And so now on to the economic influences. 
So there is a difficulty to obtain nutritious food at a reasonable price, and there is limitation to access to healthy and fresh foods. So these low-income communities have a hard time being able to pay for nutritious food because the prices make it almost impossible for it to happen. There are also not many options to choose from, and so the locally owned businesses tend to have higher prices. And so it makes it harder when there's not, let's say, like a big brand company like Walmart here close by that are easy and cheaper prices, but also have the same nutritious value. And there are also a lot of access to energy dense foods in schools and workplaces that are an easy and tempting option to make for lower prices. So the cheap foods that are also cheap in nutrition and in overall price just makes it more easier. And so some effects of obesity are that the individual will have an impaired metabolic pathway and sleeping link pathways that make it hard to lose weight and regain weight quickly. And obesity itself is not considered a mental illness, but it can lead to mental illnesses like depression and anxiety. So the individual can feel as if they are rejected unattractive and can also suffer from social discrimination, which causes there to be an emotional strain. The emotional strain increases if they um, usually feel if when they're trying to lose weight and they can't, they're blamed or they blame themselves for having no self-control. And so that really brings down their low self-esteem and which is when they can fall into depression. And so individuals also have other health complications that coexist with obesity and they're at higher risk for different diseases. And so some of these diseases that they're more at risk for is having high blood pressure, type two diabetes, coronary heart disease, stroke, osteoarthritis, sleepopenia, and many different other cancers. And so what could help with this growing problem? Children should be educated on this problem and schools should also implement different protocols. So for example, an active recess. In schools, this should be introduced by having an active recess break before lunch that is planned, inclusive, actively um, supported, and just different games or activities that could help these children have a more active recess. Also, educating these kids about nutrition in a fun way could also help implement that healthy living lifestyle. And another way to educate kids about a healthy diet should be shown during lunch and breakfast. And so it's just putting that example forward to these children that a healthy lunch or breakfast can be a really good thing. And so another approach that can be taken is providing food incentive programs that could help these low income individuals um, have meal funds in order to purchase foods. And so just by helping people that aren't as fortunate to have that money to buy nutritious food, it should, everyone should be able to have that resource to healthy food. And so there should also be programs for people to participate in that are welcoming and easy for them to start. So these fitness programs should be easy and a fun way so they have that motivation to keep going. And so um, there should also be support for all ages in these fitness programs, both elderly children and middle age to adolescents. And so it is also important to strengthen and build up positive social networks networks to provide supportive relationships in order to change behavior and be successful with it. And so in these programs, there should be really, really, really supportive people that are there for you or even take a buddy with you. So it's easy for you to be going to these things. 
And so I think that could actually really help with this growing um, problem. So another way to help this problem could be enhancing streetscapes with like bike lanes and enough sidewalk coverage and pretty much throughout the town just have more safe street crossings and by having this sense of security people will most likely go out on runs or walks and so just by having this place it could be really beneficial for people to start with their exercise um, living style. So another way to help this growing problem could also be exercise prescriptions. So this I found that physicians or any type of let's say physical therapist or doctor could help by providing people who are at risk for obesity an exercise plan which could be accompanied by check-ins and a healthy diet. And so these are just a couple things that could help with the growing problem. And I really, really, really liked the educating part and taking action in the community and these different food incentive and fitness programs could genuinely help a person with their risk for obesity. And so in conclusion, to decrease obesity within Morrow County, the following must be taken into consideration. So these communities need to be more educated on this, on this problem. So um, you could use flyers, pamphlets, educate people during in health classes, and then check-ins with your local practitioner just to see how you're doing and so to stop the problem before it, before it becomes one. And also have programs for all ages that will make the person be comfortable and overall have fun. And food incentive programs for low income families are something that should be really, really, really um, taken into consideration. And I know there's things like food stamps, but I know also that a lot of people cannot, um, do not receive them just because of the situation they are placed in. And so also a big emphasis on importance of social networks. So just surrounding yourself with good people and supportive people that will help you become the better, the better version of yourself. And overall, I think just by having that support group, it could pretty much help you do anything, even reduce your risk for obesity, or if you are or if the individual is suffering from obesity, to help them regain that healthy look living style in order to live life at their fullest potential so everyone thank you for your time it's all about diet and exercise but take into consideration genetic economic and social factors and then a list of my references all right thank you for your time